MMA Now, Power Move, Film On TV Network. I believed in myself, and um, I went out there and I got the job done. Um, I could have, you know, I could have put a better performance on in, in my own mind. Of, you know, a fighter is his worst critic, and um, I played it a little conservative, especially when I was on the top position. And um, you know, I just, I just knew he was a dangerous opponent, very uh, well versed veteran who had some um, sneaky tricks up his uh, in, in his book, and I had to be careful. And I, I really was in a dangerous position in my career where I couldn't afford another loss, so I had to play it a little conservative. And, and the next fight will definitely be a little more action packed. I promise you that. Do you feel like you're rejuvenated being at 55 again? I mean, you've been bouncing around different ways. See, um, you know. Going back to 155 is like, it, it was very rejuvenating just after doing 45s. Was, 45s was too much for me. It was too much of a cut. You know, even cutting to 55 still was 19 pounds. A 19 pound cut coming in 19 pounds on Tuesday um, at check-in time. And um, so, yeah, no, I felt good. I was able to enjoy the experience. I was able to enjoy fight week, every workout. I got to have some nutrition in my body. So, yeah, I was, I was re revived and um, revamped and just uh, excited to be back here in Vegas because this is, this is where I started my, my UFC career. My first big UFC pay-per-view was here at MGM Grand back at UFC 54. So, you know, it feels like forever, but, um, it's, you know, it's, it, it's good to be back and um, I'm just excited to be back in the W column. And um, on the positive side, um, I have no injuries coming out of the fight, no cuts, no stitches, no broken bones, no nothing, so so that means I can get straight back to, to training camp, go um, help out my teammate BJ Penn, get ready for his for his comeback, and um, just get back to work. What's that like having BJ Penn in your camp? Um, it's amazing, man, because uh, we were always friends, but we never would train together because we're like, oh, we're going to fight one day, so, so we better not train together, and um, when he decided to come to Greg's, I was the one who... I think sealed it, sealed the envelope when it came to him, him fully committing to moving his life to Albuquerque for a while to 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 go at it again. And and um, so you know um, he's my boy and um, he helped me for this one. I'm, I'm gonna help him for his fight. And um, it's just a, a different dynamic that we have because we went to war against each other. We have a tremendous amount of respect for each other. And um, he understands and I understand the ups and the downs of mixed martial arts. And we're both relatively in the older age group. So it's like, you know, come on, man, let's motivate each other. Let's lift each other up. Let's believe you believe, I believe in you, you believe in me. Let's do this together. This was your 17th uh, career win in the UFC by decision. I don't know if you know this, but that's actually a UFC <laughs> record. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, Hey, there you go, making history. <laughs> try, try, try to be the first one to, to win in four divisions. That uh, didn't go my way, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm not going down 45 again. But how does that make you feel, though, knowing that you know you've had all these fights where they have gone the distance and you're still coming out on top? It's quite the feat, I would say. You know what? Um, it it is because this organization is is what makes it such a feat because it is the best organization in the world. It is the best fighters in the world, and um, even some of the best of the best. Even like like Fabricio Werdum, you know, he's been gone and he he got cut and had to go and other places. And there's been a lot of other fighters. Vitor Belfort, you know, he took his he he took his route to Japan. Bj, all of the all a lot of the greats have have all have have came to UFC and left UFC and came back to UFC. But um, I'm probably the 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 longest staying uh, veteran that actually you know stayed and made it and and was never released from the company. Absolutely. Uh, is there anyone you want to fight next? You're back at 55. There's lots of options. You fought so many guys in this division already. Is there anyone you have on your mind? You know what? There, there, there is. Um, I do like. Um, I do like the Joe Lozon fight. You know, we both. Uh, they, they made it a couple years back in November. He got injured. I got injured, and we didn't get to do the fight. But the fans really loved that fight. So it, it's that's the fight probably that I think is most more than likely going to happen. He wants to fight. I want the fight. And um, he was going to fight me here on this card, but his hand was broken. So um, we'll see. Maybe Jim Miller. Uh, maybe Gilbert Melendez too. You know, uh, there's there's a, there's so many good 155 pounders out there, and and a lot of big names. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. You had a good experience with the crowd in Monterrey, Diego. That fight with Joe Lawson a couple of years ago was going to happen in Mexico City on the first UFC the card. There, the UFC will probably return to Mexico City 
later this year. Would you like to have the Joe Lawson fight in Mexico City where it was signed first? You know what? I would love to have my fight in Mexico City. I love Mexico. I love the culture. It's like my favorite place in like all the world. Like straight up. No lie. Best food. Best tequila. I love I love Mexico. But the taxes were a little rough out there. And so I'm going to try to stay home here in America. Stay home in Vegas if I can. But you know what? Like, like, you know what? Like I said, though, if the UFC needs me, I'm there. I'm a company man, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm here to fight for the company and the organization. We were fighting in Canada. You've never fought there in your career. Uh, we, just, we got some awesome fans up there in the Great White North. What do you think about fighting up there? That would be a dream come true. I actually, um, when I, my trips that I've made up to Canada, I mean, die hard, the, like the the best UFC fans that are die hard. And like I, I went up to the Expo a couple times. I was there when uh, Jake Shields fought uh, GSP, and, and uh, you guys, you guys, you guys are great up there. I'd love to fight there. Um, we've mentioned BJ Penn and Joe Lozano and Jim Miller and others. Is it hard for old school warriors like you guys to evolve with the sport? I mean, the sport's changing so fast. Do you feel like it's hard to stay on top and keep up with the latest trends in MMA? Um, you know what? It, it, it is. It is hard to, to stay with it. But the thing is this, you know. You fight long enough, and you fight for a long enough time, and you have enough fights, you're going to run into bad luck, you're going to have a hard weight cut here, you're going to take a body shot, you're going to go into a foot, uh, fight with a hurt foot. You know, there's always so many variables in this sport that you can't just say, oh, the, the guy's not evolving here, the guy's not evolving there. And sometimes the guy's trying to evolve here so much, like for me, for instance, training, striking so much, getting away from my wrestling, getting away from my grappling. It, it, it's, it's a give take in this sport and, and guys are going to have their, their good strides, the guys are going to have their low strides and it's going to be ups and downs and that's how the sport goes. But um, you know, I think as long as you can maintain health, number one, and, and stay healthy and take good care of yourself and continue to train with the best in the world. You know, like, I think that the big, huge difference in the fight with me and Jim Miller tonight was Jim Miller he trains with his brother and, and some guys out of his own gym in New Jersey and makes trips to go train here and there with different good guys. But, but me, I have the best training team in the world. And that means I have the best kickboxers. I have the best wrestlers from Dagestan. I have all these, these, these different um, dynamics that a, a normal team that, you know, it's just a bunch of guys who are trying to make it on their own, you know. It, it, it really brings us in New Mexico to the next level, and um, you're going to see that because we just got our new facility this um, this last year. We haven't even had it for more than, like, five months, but um, we're rocking. We're rocking hard. You're going to see Holly dominate tonight. You're going to see uh, John make a comeback, DJ make a comeback. I'm making my comeback, and um, it's going to be a good year for for New Mexico, for Albuquerque, and, uh, and Jackson Week Academy. What does it mean for you to be the last man standing for the first season of the fight? You could have never imagined that you'd be the only one there, right? Um, you know what? Um, I, I always knew I was going to be something in this sport, and um, I, I give the credit to God because I feel like um, everybody's composed differently genetically. Some guys are tougher than others. You know, some guys, you know, they, they, they got, they got, they're made of glass and, you know, their knees are blowing out every five, you know, and, and you know, some guys just have bad luck. I don't know, but I, all I know is that God made me durable. I'm, I'm, made, I'm made tough. I'm Sanchez tough. And, uh, and, and I'm still around and I'm still healthy. And I, I have to credit that to also taking care of myself. You know, always, you know, doing the yoga, you know, um, doing the supplementation, doing the diet, doing the nutrition, staying healthy. And so, you know, it, it's one of those things where, you know, I knew I probably would be the last one standing in the UFC of the Ultimate Fighter Season 1 because I was the youngest one. I was only 22 years old when I was on the show. And so, um, you know, I'm, I'm 34 now. I turned 34 on New Year's Eve. And, and, um, I'm making my making my my final run in this sport, and um, I'm just going to enjoy it and give it everything I have. And I think I found my true home at 155. But I, what I would really like to see happen in the sport is I think it should be they, they want us to be healthier with the weight cutting. So I think they need to make it every 10 pounds, you know, because 
125, 135, 145, 155, then we get the big jumps to 170 and 185, and those are the, the more average size men. If you look out here, we see these men, you know, 190, 170, 165. These, these guys are the average size men, and, and, and yet we have, to, we have to make a decision where it's a big time jump, where you get big, huge guys like Brandon Thatcher are coming down to 170, or you get guys who are just making unhealthy and, and, and it's affecting their performance and their health. And something that I'm learning now, I work with Cerebrum Health Centers out in Dallas. They fix a lot of the NFL concussions, and, and it's all about balancing the right and the left hemispheres of the brain. And, and, and they do CAT scans, they do all kinds of crazy stuff. They, they fix people with Alzheimer's. It's, a, it's really a, a evolving technology that they have out there. And so like, I'm, out, I'm out there doing that, taking care of my brain health, and I'm realizing the stuff that they're teaching me, not only in diet and nutrition, and stuff that you put into your body that causes inflammation in the brain, and, but dehydration is very, very bad for us especially as fighters who are getting hit in the head, dehydration is the worst thing that we could do. And so I'm hoping that we'll make it at least a minimum of every 10 pounds. And, and, and it makes for more of those big, huge super fights anyway of champion versus champion that, you know, all the MMA fans love to see those champion versus champion fights. And, and I, I think it would be great for the sport. I want to be an ambassador for it. If, if it was to happen, I would, uh, I would look to probably fight at 165. Uh, and I would like to see, I would like to see the rest of the MMA community and the fighters only cutting 10 pounds. And I, I, I think that all the fighters would be healthier, and it, it, it would just be better for the sport. Do you think the UFC needs to adopt weight cutting changes like last season? Um, I think it's uh, it's something that we're already adopting and that we're, it, it's in the process. But I think that without having a fairness to to the weight class limits. It, it's not going to happen. So you know, 15 pounds is crazy. That's that's too much weight. And what do you see? Do last and what do you see like the UFC coming, uh, coming around to that kind of line of thinking and making those changes? Um, you know, I think it's a matter of time. I think it's a matter of time. We have Usada on board. They're taking care of us. We're getting better at it. The guys are cutting less weight already. Things are starting to move in the right direction, and I, I and, and people are starting to realize like, look, you know, you guys got Conor, guys like Conor McGregor coming from 145 or 170, you know, and, and being able to, to, to fight like that and, and, and be competitive. Yeah, this, this is something that will continue to happen if guys start to not cut as much weight, you know, start, start toning it down. And I, 10 pounds, you know, 10 pounds, you can cut that in the morning and go make weight and you're good. You know, you're not having to be dehydrated for a whole week. All right, thanks guys. Thanks, Diego. Thank you.